Come on and praise him. Amen. Thank you, Lord. God, we praise you. We appreciate you. Good to be in the house of the Lord. If you have your Bibles, look with us in Jeremiah chapter 6. Jeremiah chapter 6. I want to thank everybody for being here this morning. Amen. Hon honored and humbled that you're here to worship the Lord with us. Jeremiah chapter 6. I would title this, Be Prepared for Perilous Predictions. Be prepared for the coming to pass and coming to fruition of perilous predictions. Jeremiah is an often overlooked book because he was a prophet of judgment. He was described as the weeping prophet, and he was a prophet of judgment. He always came with a get-right word, told the people where they were wrong and what they needed to do. Amen. He wasn't a hyping type kind of preacher. He didn't come to give you a goose bump. But he come to give you a word from the Lord, something that would shake you, amen, to your core and change the way you live and then change the outcome of your life for the better. Amen. All right, let's look at this. Chapter 6, verse 1, King James Version. Everybody there say amen. amen. O ye children of Benjamin, gather yourself to flee out of the midst of Jerusalem. Blow the trumpet in Tekoa and set up a sign of fire in Beth Hakrim. For evil appeareth out of the north and a great destruction. I have likened the daughter of Zion to a comely and delicate woman. The shepherds with their flocks shall come unto her. They shall pitch their tents against, round, against her round about. They shall feed everyone in his place. Prepare you war against her. Arise and let us go up at noon. The war is against the church. The daughter of Zion. Woe unto us. For the day goeth away, for the shadows of the evening are stretched out. Arise, let us go by night, let us destroy her palaces. Let's pray. Father, we love you, we praise you, we appreciate you, we thank you for the power of your word. God, I ask you to move in this sanctuary. God, touch the hearts and minds of your people. Save those that are lost. You told Elisha to shoot an arrow out of the east window direction. That arrow was the arrow of salvation and deliverance. God, I pray that salvation rings in heaven this morning that somebody gives their heart to you. God, you said the angels rejoice when one lost sinner repents. So, God, touch your people this morning. God, let this word go forth with power, clarity, and authority. We praise you in Jesus' name. The church said, amen. You may be seated. Be prepared for perilous predictions. We're living in the last days. I preach it all the time, amen, the trouble that we're in and the trouble that this nation, the attack that this nation is under. It, as globally, internationally, even corporately as, as an organization and personally, as you as an individual, you are under attack. The thief comes to steal, kill, and destroy. But I want to look at Jeremiah chapter 6. Jeremiah was described as the weeping prophet, the crying prophet. He was always weeping and crying, crying out to God for a people, amen, that wouldn't do right and couldn't get right. So I want to look at chapter 6, verse 1, and I'm going to be preaching at the message version. It says, run for your lives, children of Benjamin. Now, the children of Benjamin, amen, were symbolic of God's right hand. So, amen, God loved the Benjamites, amen. God loved them, and God had favor on them. But the Bible said, run for your lives, get out of Jerusalem, now give a blast of the ram's horn send up smoke signals because doom pours out of the north what this, this was an invasion God was speaking to the children of Israel saying be prepared get ready there's an invasion I come by my way to heaven this morning amen to encourage you and enlighten you that there's been an invasion not just in this nation not just against the, the daughter of Zion but there's been a personal invasion I, you've had a home invasion the enemy has come to steal He'll kill and destroy. He's wanting to wreck everything you put your hands to. He don't like you and he don't like the God that you serve. But I come by to serve notice on the enemy and let the devil know he don't determine the outcome. There's power in the name of Jesus. There's power in the blood of the Lamb. Would somebody give God a good praise this morning? Amen. He inhabits the praises of his people. There's been an invasion. So here we see Jeremiah. He begins to prophesy to the children of Israel that they're going to be invaded. And the Bible said, I have likened my dear daughter Zion, amen, to a lovely meadow. Amen. Now, now, Jeremiah associates the children of Israel as a lovely meadow. I'll explain it to you. He said, I have likened my dear daughter Zion. Zion is the church. I, amen. Jesus said, upon this rock I build my church, and the gates of hell will not prevail against it. I, it don't mean that hell won't try to come against it. It don't mean that hell won't attack it. It just means the devil will not succeed in trying to destroy the church. Can somebody give God praise this morning? Now he likened 
He likened the daughter of Zion, the church, to a lovely meadow. And that took my mind to a place where David said, Amen, God let me lay down in green pastures. Uh, the meadow is symbolic of peace. Uh, David said, God gave me peace in green me meadows. Uh, the one thing you need in your life is some peace. Uh, the one thing you need in your life is some peace of mind. Uh, the enemy comes, amen, with turmoil and, and trouble. He tries to bring chaos and confusion. Uh, he don't want you to have any peace. Uh, he wants you to go to bed and never have rest. Uh, but I come by to let you know Jesus is the Prince of Peace. Uh, and when you let God rule in your heart uh, and you take God from church into your house, uh, we've experienced too much church, Jesus. Uh, we need to take Jesus home, open up the door, serve an eviction notice on hell, and say, devil, get the hell out of my... Come on, somebody, pray. Amen. You need some peace. Amen. Some people have no peace. They don't have peace at work and they have trouble at home. Therefore, they lay there tormented. And then that happy devil shows up and makes you think there's greener grass on the other side. But the green grass grows on a septic tank. You better stay where you at and pray your... I have likened my daughter Zion, the church, to a lovely meadow. Well, now shepherds from the north have discovered her. I, I'm going to talk about that north coming down. The Bible says, amen, they pitched camp all around her. I, they pitched camp all around her. They pitched tents all around the church. I, what is this? This is a satanic setup. I, they pitched tents. What do you do with a tent? You set it up. I, now there's satanic setups, I, amen, that are coming against America. Amen, there's enemies of the north that are coming against America. We see Russia and China. Amen. They're coming against the United States. I, I'm not going to get all political this morning, but I can and I will a little. Amen. We're seeing a kingdom divided. I, we're seeing America self-destruct. We're seeing people turn on one another because of the color of their skin. I, and they're being race baited by politics. I, but it's time for the church to come together as one blood I, and one people I, and one voice I, and begin to cry out to God like Jeremiah for the people. They pitch camp. That means there's a satanic setup. And the Bible said they're prepared to attack. Amen. But the Bible says the fight is on to arms. The fight is on two arms. The fight is on two arms. We have the Democratic Party trying to take your Second Amendment right to bear arms. Amen. God wants you to have a gun. As a matter of fact, in Luke chapter 22, he told the disciples he was walking. He said, if you got to sell your coat, sell some clothes, and buy you a sword. And Peter said, we got two. And Jesus said, okay, that's good. And here the Bible says that Jeremiah told the people two arms. Amen. They had different blasts that they would blow. The shofar, amen, the ram's horn, the kudu horn, different blasts, amen, was indicative of different things that God wanted them to do. Amen, when, when, the, when, the, when the boy would blow the horn, it, a call to arms, that means every man would go get their weapons. There was a call to prayer. And here Jeremiah calls them to arms. What he's saying is get your weapons ready. God wants you to have weapons. God wants you to protect yourself. And what this government is doing, first they'll take your weapons, and then they'll take all your freedom, and you won't be able to fight somebody give God praise and this is the kind of preaching in the last days amen that the enemy will try to shut down Jeremiah he says prepare to attack the fight is on two arms what he's saying is the enemy now God is allowing this attack on Israel God allows it to happen because the children of Israel have sinned and got out of covenant with God and here the enemy is getting their arms ready their weapons ready and the Bible says amen in, in between verse 1 and 5 oh it's too late day is dying evening shadows are upon us. Uh, we're up anyway. We'll attack by night. What he's saying is it's too late. Uh, don't think amen. I know we're Pentecostal and we give everybody hope about everything. Uh, but I warn you this morning there is a time called too late. Uh, amen. And a time called too many. Uh, don't wait around amen till it's too late. Uh, don't wait around till it's over. This is good stuff. There is a time called too many and a place called too late. And here the Bible said too late. You're under attack. Amen, you're under attack. And the Bible said we'll attack by night and we'll tear apart her defenses stone by stone. This is so good. See, there's types and shadows and there's symbolisms and comparisons. Now, the Bible says in Jeremiah chapter 6, amen, that the enemy says they're going to tear apart the defenses of the church. A tear apart, isn't it ironic, amen, that there was just a discrepancy within our government to quit funding, amen, the, the, the iron dome for Israel. Israel has an iron dome over it. 
Amen. It, it, it's, it's a missile mechanism to where if any enemy tries to send a missile in Israel, that one will be sent out and blow it up in the air before it hits Israel. But here Jeremiah said there's a day coming, amen, that the defenses of Israel will try to be broken down. We're living in that day right now. The Democratic Party is trying to stop funding, amen, the Iron Dome for Israel. But I come by to let you know even if that happens, God's hand, I feel holy, Ghost. even if that happens, God's hand, how I bust your court? God's hands on Israel. God said, I'll bless those that bless her and I'll curse those that curse it. This is good stuff. It said, we'll tear apart her defenses. And what Satan wants to do personally in your home, he wants to tear apart your defenses. The Bible said, stand ye therefore with the whole armor of God on. All the armor of God is a defense mechanism. The helmet of salvation. Amen. The helmet on a soldier would keep a dagger from going in the ear. Amen. The same thing with your faith. Faith by hearing. Amen. Hearing by the word of God. When you put the helmet of salvation on, it's a defense mechanism for all that negativity you hear. Put on a breastplate of righteousness. Amen. The Bible said, guard your heart for out of it flow the issues of life. When you put on the breastplate, when you put on the breastplate of righteousness, it guards your heart from the fiery darts and daggers that the enemy tells you you're not happy. You're never going to be anything. Amen. Loins girt about with truth. Amen. They would have brass strips that would come down to keep a knife from hitting you in that main artery because you would bleed out. Amen. The breastplate. Amen. Of righteousness. Loins girt about with truth. Feet shod with the preparation of the gospel. Where we're taking the shield of faith. All that is defense mechanism. And here the Bible says that Satan wants to tear down your defense. He wants to wreck your prayer life. He wants you to get so busy. He wants you to go get so busy and so consumed and so tied up and tangled up that you don't have time to get on your knees and say, God, protect me. God, watch over me and mine. God, I plead your blood over us. God, I'm going to prophesy over my sons and daughters. Thank you, Holy Ghost. We'll attack by night. We'll tear down her defenses. That's verse 7 of chapter 6, Jeremiah. We'll attack by night and we'll tear down her defenses. There's a demon called nightmare. We'll attack by night and we'll tear down her defenses. There's a demon, nightmare. Not, you know, you have dreams and then you have nightmares. And, and, and a dream is supposed to be something good and a nightmare is something. There's actually a demon with a name, nightmare, that shows up at the fourth watch to wreck you, amen, and it's actually to disturb your next day. And the Bible said God of angel armies gave the orders. This is something. All I just told you now, amen, how the enemy's going to attack and how by night come and break down the defenses. The Bible said God of angel armies gave the order. God allowed the attack. God allowed the attack. You know, I, I see people, amen, that, have, have got so left-leaning, amen, that they can't be used by God. The Bible said in Ecclesiastes 10, too, that the heart of the wicked leans to the left and the heart of the wise leans to the right. That's why we have two political parties, and they are described by left and right. Ecclesiastes 10, too. Ecclesiastes, the heart of the wicked leans to the left. The heart of the wise leans to the right. And here, amen, the Bible is talking about God allowing the attack. Amen. Because God so loves your soul. When your soul gets in jeopardy, God will take his hand off you and allow the enemy to trouble everything you love to try to drive you to your knee. God don't allow attacks to you to hurt you. God don't allow attacks to you because he don't like you. God allows attacks because he loves your soul. And maybe by the attack, it'll drive you to God and say, here I am. That's why the Bible says, do not despise God's chastening. And do not despise God's correction. Because as a son loves a father, so does God love you. And he'll whip you when you... This is better than y'all shouting. So, so when you get out of line with God, God will just take his hand off you and allow the enemy to trouble things you love. Some of your trouble has been a sick child. Some of your trouble has been a marriage about to be wrecked. Some of your trouble, amen, has been financial failure. Amen, it, it wasn't made, it wasn't designed to drive you away from God. It was designed to get you back in position with God. Give God some praise this morning. So God allowed the attack. And the Bible says, amen, in verse 6 through 8, chop down her trees and build a siege ramp against Jerusalem. Chop down her trees and build a siege ramp. What does siege ramp? When I read that, the first thing that came in my spirit was access. Access and availability. Now, 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 Jeremiah said the enemy was given access to chop down Jerusalem's trees and build a siege ramp, build, build, build a ramp to where they had access in 
to Jerusalem. Some of you are under attack because you give the enemy access. Some of you, amen, have no peace because you give too many people availability to you. This is good stuff. The wrong person have, having the availability of your time could wreck you. The wrong person having access into your home could wreck everything that God's doing. In Jeremiah said the enemy is going to cut down Jerusalem's trees and build a siege ramp, access into it, some of you have social media outlets, and that's the access that the enemy has, and he's troubling you by it. So, some of you have too many social media outlets, whether it be Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, MySpace, Snapchat, whatever is out there, and there's multiple ones. Amen. It gives people access. It gives people availability to you, but privacy is power because people can't wreck what they don't know. You know, there used to be a time that witches wanted pictures of people. You know, I'm not going to get all spiritual with you this morning, but I can. Because I know, because I was tied up with witchcraft for, for, for most of my life. So I was 27 years old. Had a spell cast on me. Had all kind of things done. I've been in places, man, crack houses, woke up, patches of blood, uh, patches of hair shaved off my body. Blood drew out of my body. Had, had some witches lay around me one night when I was passed out, lighting candles and do, doing prayer vigils around me, so I know I know a little bit about what I'm talking about. Witches used to want pictures of people. Now they don't. Have, now they got easy access to all your pictures and all your kit. Give God praise anyway. And the Bible said, Amen. Once the enemy built a siege ramp and had access and availability into Israel, that the city would be full of brutality. I'm reading word for word. The city would be full of brutality, bursting with violence. Just as a good whale well holds a supply of water, amen, she supplies wickedness nonstop. The streets echo with cries, violence, and rape. Victims bleeding and moaning lie all over the place. You're in deep trouble, Jerusalem. Doesn't that kind of sound like Baltimore? Doesn't that sort of sound like the major cities that's run by Democrat mayors and governors, amen? Doesn't that kind of sound like, amen, the stuff pumped by Antifa? Come on, somebody, and give God praise. Doesn't that kind of sound like Black Lives Matter? You know, Martin Luther King showed up in a, in a three-piece suit with a Bible. He didn't show up with bottles of water and rock. Would somebody praise God anyway? So here, what Jeremiah's prophesying, we're already seeing in the streets of America. 5,000 years ago, he gave a prophecy in 2021. We're seeing it right here in our streets now in front of our very eyes. And we're so tied up and tangled up with everything that we don't need. It's, you know, in the Bible, when five people died, it, it was written down as, as a record. And now people die, but we've been so desensitized to it because we gave our kids video games and they blew police officers' brains out. And, and because our, mov our movies are so violent, death has been desensitized. And now we can see somebody die, and it's just ev everyday common practice now. We've been so de our children have been so desensitized to stuff that really, that, that really hurts that, that we're seeing a generation that don't have any fear. Give God some praise this morning. And God says right here in verse 7 and 8, Jeremiah chapter 6, you're in deep trouble, Jerusalem. You push me to my limit. That's God. Now, I push people, amen. And, I, I, you know, I, I, early on before I was in God, I learned how to push people to get things I want. But God's one person you don't push. The eagles sang a song, take it to the limit. Amen. The one person you don't want to take to the limit is God. And God said, you have me, amen. At the, you push me to the limit. I'm on the brink of being, you're on the brink of being wiped out. Now, brink, not blink. Now, now, when I tried to look up, amen, the, the brink of destruction, it didn't show, it said the blink. But I looked up the word brink, and that means the extreme edge. God said, you, God said you're on the extreme edge, and you push me to the brink. Uh, you wouldn't believe the times that me, I'm, I'm not going to talk about you, because I know you got your church face on this morning. You put your anointing on your head. You got up and prayed your prayers, and amen, you, you shook oil and everything and cleaned yourself up. I'll talk about me. You wouldn't believe the times that I've been on the brink of destruction. I, amen. One wrong turn, and I might not be here right now, but I'm thankful that God had mercy. I'm thankful that he sent judgment before he sent correction. For anybody that's experienced God's mercy this morning, stand on your feet and give your God a praise. If it had not been for mercy, if it had not been for the Lord that was on my side, Now, I know you can't admit that you've been at the brink of destruction because she's standing beside you. And I know you can't admit that you've been in a place that you almost got out of God because he's sitting there. But I know, I've lived enough. As you sat there, as you sat there, amen, with all nine pieces of the suit on and so early, 
that nobody could hold, the devil can't even hold on to you on Sunday morning. You're like one of them prize fighters with oil on, you know, the devil can't even put a good grip on you. But, but I know, I've done lived a few times in, in 40, 45 years, and I know what it's about, I know what life's like in church and out of church. You push me to the brink of being wiped out. And the Bible said, time's up, verse 9, time's up. Harvest the grapes for judgment. God said that the wheat and the tares grow up together. You know, you know, they're growing up, wheat and tares is growing up in church. Wheat and tares. Everybody in church isn't holy. Everybody in church isn't here, amen, to serve God. Some people just here for the fish and loaves. Let the wheat and the tares grow up together. There's going to come a separation. Amen. The wheat's going to be thrown, amen, in the good pile to the right. The tares is going to be thrown in the fire, which means hell and burned up. Could somebody praise God this morning? The Bible said, amen, time's up, harvest the grapes for judgment. Salvage what's left of Israel, amen, salvage what's left. The Bible talks about a prophet that looked at a lamb that had been destroyed by a lion. And the Bible said that lamb didn't have but two legs and one ear. I come by to let you know if you got a leg to stand on and an ear to hear, I promise God can turn it around. You're not too far gone. You're not too bad. God can work a miracle in your life. And the Bible said, go back over the vines. Pick them clean every last grape. And then I started, and that took my mind to a scripture. The Bible said it's the small foxes that spoil the vine. It's the small foxes. God said, gather the grapes, go back over and pick them clean. What God's saying, amen, it's the small foxes that spoil the vine, not the big ones. It's not the big things that you see. Amen. If Satan walked in, amen, with flames on him and a pitchfork and a, and a six-foot tail, you, you, you know, with a talon on the end of it, you'd see him. It's the small foxes, it's the little things that come in. It's not the big things that cause a blow up in your family. It's the small things. Amen. It's the dishes in the sink. Amen. It, 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 it's, the, it's the coffee ring on the table. It's the clothes you got to walk over. It's the you never cooking a good meal. And all those small things add up to one big blow up. But because you're a Christian and you ain't supposed to say anything and you're supposed to love everybody, amen, you hold all that in. Well, what happens is enough is enough and you have a blow up over small. Am I preaching to anybody this morning? So all of a sudden, you overlook all that. You step over all that. Amen. So you hold it to finally, enough's enough. We've been having us a little come to Jesus meeting. <laughs> Give God some praise this morning. Now, God says here in Jeremiah chapter 6, verse 10, I've got something to say. Is anybody listening? The Bible said in Revelation, let him that has an ear hear what the Spirit's saying to the church. He said, I've got a warning to post. I, I know you got a selfie to post. But do you have a warning to post? God said, I got a warning to post. Will anybody notice? And then he says, it's hopeless. Their ears are stuffed with wax. Deaf as a post and blind as a bat. It's hopeless. They've tuned out God. Let me tell you something. When God says it's hopeless, you're in trouble. They have tuned out God. I am masterful at tuning people out. I can look at your eyes and see your mouth moving and not even hear what you're saying. All of you can. You got some other stuff on your mind and you're trying to be attentive to who's talking to you and all of a sudden you walk away like, what did they just say? But it's because it's, because it's not important to you. You got something else more important on your mind. You, you know, I, 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 yesterday, I, I was thinking about hunting. We went on a good hog hunt. Has some things. Teresa was looking at me, talking to me about something and, I, and my mind was in Tarver, Georgia. And all of a sudden she walked off. She said, listen, this is important now. And all of a sudden she walked off and I'm like, what, what was she talking about? It, it happens. You, 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 can, you, you can hear and not listen. You understand what I'm saying? God, God said, God said, look, they tuned out God. They don't want to hear from me. They have tuned out God. They don't want to hear from me. Amen. The, the political party of the left has tuned out God. They don't want to hear from him. They've taken monuments down. They've taken the commandments off the walls of, of, of courthouses and schoolhouses. They don't want to hear from God. They want separation from God, separation from church and state. Here God said, they don't want to hear from me. And God said, I can't hold it in much longer. Heard one preacher say that if God don't do something, he's going to have to call back Sodom and Gomorrah and repent to it and say, I'm sorry. But he'll never do that because something's fixing to happen. Give God praise that you're in the house this morning. Verse 11, so dump it on the children in the street. Let it loose on gangs of youth. For no one's exempt. Husbands and wives will be taken. Old and the ones ready to die. Their homes will be given away. 
Let me tell you something. You cannot get away from this word. This word is living. The Bible said the word of God is spirit and life. I'm from a small town of about 3,000 people, small town America, and we knew everybody. And, and, and I know people that had estates, lands, farm. And all my life I heard they got it ill by ill-gotten gain. Their grandfathers and forefathers beat people out of it. And every one of them has lost it. Every one of them has come to nothing and had to settle it in the end, lost it in destruction. Let me tell you, ill-gotten gain, amen, does not profit you. But the Bible said in Proverbs that a man and woman that will work hard, amen, and honor God, God will prosper you. You will never lose any. The canker worm and the palmer worm can't destroy it. Rust can't corrupt it. Thieves can't steal it. And the moth can't destroy it. Somebody praise God because you honor him with your wealth. This is good stuff. God said, I can't hold it any longer. Amen. Their homes will be given away. And the Bible said in verse 13, everyone's after a dishonest dollar. Little people, big people alike, prophets, priests, everyone in between. They had gotten to a place where it was all about money. They twist words and doctor truth. God, this is awesome. They, they, they twist words and doctor truth. God said in verse 13, they were after dishonest dollars. You know, the Bible said he that makes haste to be rich has an evil eye and shall not consider that poverty will fall upon him. He that makes haste. He that's in a hurry to get rich. The Bible said the love of money is the root of all evil. So when you love money more than you do, a, a people is the root of all evil. Not, you know, money is a good thing. The Bible said Ecclesiastes, money answers all things. But you got to make money. You can't allow money to make you. I, we all know somebody, amen, that loves money, and they allow money to make them. Give God some praise. Now, what I wanted to talk about is he said in verse between 13 and 15, twist words and doctor truth. There's people that twist words and they doctor truth. There's people that twist the Bible. They twist the Bible to fit their lifestyle. They will twist the word to fit how they want to live. Amen. And they will doctor truth. There's people that does that. There's people, amen, that, that, that likes a certain sin, so they'll find an excuse for it in the Bible. But I want to talk to you for just a minute about sins. There's different levels of sins. There's sins, transgressions, trespasses, inequities, and abominations. There's sins, amen. The Bible said, he that knoweth to do good and doeth it not, to him it is sin. Amen. And there's sins, transgressions, trespass. A trespass is when you cross a line. A trespass is when you touch something that you know is off limits from God. This is good stuff. You know, we're living in this day and age now, this 2021, and, 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 and you know, you can, you can try out a car before you buy it. You can have sex with a woman before you marry But I'm going to stop here for just a minute, and, and, I, and I just want to set the record straight. That, that there's, there's sins of the mouth, sins of the mouth. Gossip, tail-bearing, backbiting, tail-bearing. You're just telling a tale, even if it's true. If I, found, if, I, if I found dirt on you, if I tell somebody with the wrong motive, that's a sin to me. If I, if I know you're dirt, if I know you're closet, and I tell her simply for the sake of telling her, but I'll tell her, hey, you be praying for old sister Jimmy, old brother Jimmy. You know, a lot of times we use prayer as an excuse to open up a door for gossip. Oh, you pray for him now and bless his little heart. Do we think that we can say anything we want to and cap it with bless their little heart? And God, God's approved with that. They're sins of the mouth. Gossip, backbiting, tail bearing. That's just telling a tale. Tail bearing. That's just bearing a tale. That's just telling something about him that's none of my business or none of your business. That's sin. They're sins of the body. The Bible said he that sins against his body sins against God, but he that, sins, he that commits sexual sin sins against his, his own body. He that sins against God sins against his soul, but he that sins sexually sins against his body. Fornication is a sin. If you die in it, you go into hell. That's sex between two unmarried people. Adultery is a sin. If you die in it, you're going to hell. If David, he was God's man, never removed from office. If he had had a heart attack in the act with Bathsheba, he'd be in hell right now. They're sin. They're sin. Adultery, fornication, lying, stealing. The Bible said all liars will have their part in the lake of fire. Then there's abominations. That's sin on steroids. Homosexuality. Homosexuality is, a, is an abomination. Not, not just a sin. It's an abomination. That is, a, that, that, that is sin on steroids. Hands that commit, that shed innocent blood, abomination, abortion. They're sins. But the Bible said in the last days, people will no longer endure sound doctrine. They want somebody to tickle their ears and tell them everything's going to be all right, everything's good, but it's not always the case. Give God praise anyway. And Jeremiah said there's people that twist words and they doctor the truth. My people are broken. They're shattered. And they put on band-aids. God, this is good, church. The message version is awesome. They put on band-aids. Now, I don't want a band-aid on a broken leg. I want you to set it right. God, this is good. 
It's good. Don't, don't band-aid me. Don't put a band-aid on my spirit. Let me wind up in hell and say, hey, you should have told me. Can, can somebody praise? I, I love you enough to tell you the truth. Don't band-aid my heart and then all of a sudden me wake up in hell and say they didn't tell me. I want to know the truth. And the Bible said here, God said through Jeremiah, and, and they put on band-aids saying it's not so bad. You'll be just fine. All but, but things aren't just fine. And, and to Dalton and to Linda's defense on things I say, you know, I, I'm the first one to tell you, oh, it's going to be all right. It's going to be all right. I, I'm, I'm, I am. I'm the first one. And, and, and her and him got mad at me before. And I've had Dalton look at me and say, man, it, it ain't all right. And I've had Sister Linda. I said, it's going to be all right. She said, it might not be. And, and right here, proof, proof to what they're saying, right here God said, amen, that they put a Band-Aid on it, saying it's not so bad, you'll be just fine, but things are not just fine. There is a time that things aren't fine. There is a time that, that things aren't going to be all right. You can push God to the brink of destruction. You can get to a place that you can't come back from. Give God praise anyway. Some of you ought to be thankful because if you're here this morning, you're not one of them. you got time. you got a chance. God's still on your side. But, Jer but Jeremiah did say, amen, everything is not fine in some cases. Do you, do you suppose they are embarrassed over this outrage? No, they have no shame. God is so good, church. Watch this. I want to talk about this, this young generation. Do you suppose they are embarrassed over this? No, they have no shame. They don't even know how to blush. God, this is good. We're seeing a generation of young people that the Bible said here they have no shame and they don't even know how to blush. There's young girls raised in the inner cities that know nothing about God's word. This is all they know about. They'll send stuff and not even blush. I'm preaching better than y'all shouting. Some of y'all better get on board with me because you know what I'm telling is the truth. The Bible said here through Jeremiah, there's a generation, amen, that has no shame and they don't even know how to blush. That means they can do anything they want without any consciousness of the sin. Now, I, I have fallen in sin since I've been in God. You, you, know, you, know, you may not have, like I said, you got it this morning and you know, and you've done your seven celestial laps around the house and, you, and, and your three holy cartwheels and you're good. But, but, you know, I've messed up since I've been in, in God. You, you, it, but, but, but the thing about it is conviction hit me hard. I felt dirty about it, guilty over it. I knew it was wrong, and I had shame over it. You're in a bad place when your conscience gets seared. The Bible said you would get to a place to do wrong, and they meant you, your conscience will override it long enough, you won't even feel bad about it anymore. So if you drank a beer last night and you felt bad about it, cussed somebody out this morning and you felt guilty, thank God that's your conscience. That's Holy Ghost saying, I'm still working on you. God is good. So, so, so if you come to church having done something wrong, something you know is wrong, and you feel bad about it, that's a good thing. That's God, that's Holy Ghost letting you know Father's still working on you. Give God some praise. But there's danger in doing wrong, amen, with no shame of it. There's danger in sinning with no consciousness. I feel Holy Ghost now. It's good stuff. Because conviction, we call it conviction. That, that, that's a bad feeling. You, 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 you know, if I'm not supposed to touch this, if I'm not supposed and I, and I know it, and, and, and I touch it, you, you know, and, and conviction, that, that's God saying, that's that dirty feeling. God said, hey, man, you shouldn't have done that. Man, that's a good thing. Then you got a chance to repent. But if you keep doing it long enough, you'll begin to override God, and then you'll look for a way around it. You'll twist truth. Give God praise anyway. And the Bible says, amen, they don't know how to blush. They've hit bottom, and there's no getting up. They don't know how to blush. There's no hope for them. They've hit bottom, and there is a place called rock bottom that you won't come up from. The Bible, Jeremiah said it, they've hit bottom and there's no getting up. I'm so glad that I've been on bottom so many times. Amen. But God loved me enough to pick me up. I'm so glad he was my lifeline. Amen. But there is a place called rock bottom. There is a time called too many. There's a place called too late. Don't wait around. If God's calling you, give him everything you got. If God's calling you, you be in the house of God every time the door's open. You're all, look, look, I'm a realist. You know, I, I've been in churches that if you miss a church service, you just backslid. If, if, if you miss the next church service, you're on your way to hell. And, and if you miss three church services when you come back, amen, you didn't even feel welcome. 
But I'm a realist, man. I understand that some things happen. You can't be at every church service. You know, but don't let minor things that don't matter keep you out of church. Raise your kids and keep your kids in church under the power of the anointing. Give God praise. The Bible said they've hit, they've hit bottom. There's no getting up. As far as I'm concerned, they're finished. God has spoken. That's a bad place to get. And the Bible said here, he said in verse 16 through 20, go stand at the crossroads and look around. What this means to me is be observant and opportunistic. Go stand at the crossroads and look around. What God's saying is, is, is don't, don't be sidetracked in these last days. Don't just take things for granted. Be observant, amen, and be opportunistic and look for chances to help somebody. Ask for directions on the old road. King James talks about the ancient path. Watch this, watch this. Ask for directions to the old road. What God's saying is this new contemporary church has got so modernized with smoke screens, amen, and PowerPoints, and we have hot, some people have donuts and chocolate, amen, hot chocolate in church on Sunday morning, amen, we've made it a theater, but what we need to do is go back to the ancient past, what we need to go back to praying like we used to pray, go back to having revivals like we used to have. Where women will get around an altar and pray, and when the daughters of Zion travail, sons and daughters shall be born into the kingdom of God. Go to the ancient past. He said, look around. Amen for the old road, the tried and true road, then take it. God, this is so good to me because this is tried and true. This, this won't fail you. This is tried and true. Everything in this is, is true. What Teresa was talking about, amen, somebody called and, and, and gave us a donation of $120,000 for this ministry, for the purchase of this church. On a Thursday morning at 726, reading Psalms 33, the call came through where that family donated $120,000 to this ministry to pay this church off. They didn't know, and I hadn't even spoke this, and let me tell you, I, I, I do prophesy, I'm a pastor, but I have the gift of prophecy, and when I tell you God told me, God told me. I don't throw that loosely. Everybody that knows me knows me. I don't just throw around God told me this and God told me to tell. When I tell you God told me something, you can take that to heaven. God told me. When we left, when we left Forest Street, God spoke to me. And said, so I'm going to give you a place, a struggle-free, a safe place to lead these people through these last days. You can't get much safer than that. I can throw a rock and hit Ashley Polk. God said, I'm going to give you a safe place, struggle-free, to marry and bury my people. And you have revivals and you see people saved and you build up a ministry. and all. Come on, somebody, and give God. And this is it. This is good stuff. Consider the old road. Take it. It's tried and true. Take it. Discover the right route for your souls. Discover the right route for your souls. Not the right route for your flesh. Because trust me. Amen. We, 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 all have a, we all have a flesh that we would like to give a flesh fix sometimes. But let me tell you something. There's more to this than flesh. There's more to this than temporary happiness. There's more to this than temporary pleasure. You got to think about your soul. Amen. Discover the right route for your soul. Not the right route for your prosperity. Not the right route for your house, your car, your business. The right route is your soul. Your soul's in jeopardy. God, this is good. But they said nothing doing. We aren't going that way. I even provided watchmen for them to warn them to set the alarm, but the people said it's a false alarm. God, that's so good. And the Bible said down there, between 16 and 20, I'm visiting catastrophe on this people, the end result of the games they've been playing with me. God, church, this is awesome. They've ignored everything I said, had nothing but contempt for my teaching. God, this is good. Stay with me just a minute. Had, had, had nothing but contempt for my teaching. Isn't it amazing that all you hear in mainstream news it, 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 it's teaching. It, it's schools, what schools is being taught. Critical race theory, CRT. All you hear now is what children are being taught in school because the Democratic Party knew if they could teach kids without parents understanding what they were being taught, they could influence the whole generation. Your children are being taught junk, and we paying for it, but what people need to do is stand up and say, you ain't teaching my kids. And the Bible said here, amen, I'm going a little further, I'm trying, to, I'm trying to land this thing, so give me just a minute to work this. What would I want with incense bought from Sheba? Your religious rituals mean nothing to me. God, this is good. Your religious rituals mean nothing to me. 
Joe Biden putting his hand on the Bible didn't mean nothing to God because Joe Biden loves him with his lips, but his heart's far from him. God said, God said, your meaningless rituals mean nothing to me. Amen. Some people love him with their lips, but their heart's far from him. Joe Biden loves him with his lips, but his heart is not for him. You can say anything you want, but your actions. And the Bible says here in verse 21, so listen to this. Here's God's verdict on your way of life. God, this is, here's God's verdict on your way of life. Here's God's verdict on Charlotte's way of life. Here's God's verdict on Teresa's way of life. Yeah, amen, you're writing a gospel. I, I know you read Mark, Matthew, Luke, and John, amen, but there's a gospel according to you. And the Bible said here, God said, watch out. I'm putting roadblocks and barriers on. Oh, God, this is good. It's awesome, man. And, and, and there's two parts, to preach, two ways to preach this. God said, watch out. I'm putting roadblocks and barriers on the road you're taking. I'm so glad when I was going the wrong way, God put a roadblock up. I'm so glad, amen, I, I'll prove it to you through Scripture. The Bible said the prophet Balaam was going in the wrong direction. God put an angel with a flaming sword to stop him. God is good. God said I put a roadblock and a barrier. Some of you was headed in the wrong direction, and God had mercy on you. Ah. God said, I have put roadblocks and barriers on the road you're taking. Balaam was headed to give a word that God didn't give, and an angel with a flaming sword, Balaam didn't even see it. The ass he was riding did. The Bible said the donkey Balaam was riding saw it. God, it's good. We can get so sidetracked that, that the dumb can see that we're messing up. You, you, beast of burden, the donkey, is, 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 is the, symbol, the symbolism is a dumb animal. And Balaam was headed in the wrong direction. God put a roadblock and a barrier. But here, God's talking to Israel. And so I put a roadblock and a barrier in your way. Sometimes it's not the devil we're fighting. It's God put a roadblock. Sometimes we pray against the devil and it ain't the devil at all. He's sitting there laughing because he don't even have to fight us because we had a God's will. And God is, the Bible said God gives grace to the humble, but he resists the proud. God gives grace to the humble. He resists the proud. That means God puts his hand up. His hand is a barrier. His hand is so proud people. So when proud people pray and bind demons, it's not a demon at all. It's God. Put your hands together and thank God that you humble. God said, I'm putting up roadblocks and barriers on the road you're taking. And the Bible said here in verse 22 through 23, an invasion from the north, a mighty power, amen, on the move from a faraway place. Hey, let me tell you something. America don't need to get to the place that they think they're so blessed that they can't be invaded. The Bible said an invasion from the north. Uh, that means things that are way heavy on you. Uh, and some of you have a lot of weight on you. It is an invasion from the north. Uh, you have a, We call it things like I got a lot on my plate. Uh, I'm under a lot of stress. Uh, they don't know what I got to walk around with uh, a day in my shoes. Uh, but never, it's a weight. And the Bible says here, amen, that a mighty power on the move from a faraway place. Let me tell you something. Biden can walk in with, 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 with his little self he wants to and talk to Vladimir Putin. Let me tell you something. That is a mighty power from a faraway place. And now we're pumping our money into it. Our economy is going down as we build Russia's economy up. The, the, the leaders of China said they'll own America in 14 years. There's a mighty power coming from a faraway place. And you don't think, need to think because we're America, amen, the land of the free and the home of the brave, that it'll stay there. If America don't turn back to God, I promise you, you're going to see other soldiers on the street in this if America don't turn back to God, not only will America be ruled by another country, Christianity won't be the main religion in America. Watch it. And you got people say, oh, that'll never happen in America. Man, man they, 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 they win in leaps and bounds every day. Oh, that'll never happen in America. If it happened to the, in Israel, and, and the Bible said the Jewish people, you, I, I promise you, amen, I'm not, I might be the apple of mama's eye, but I ain't the apple of God's eye. The Jewish people are. Now, God loves me. I'm a grafted-in Gentile, but God, the apple of God's eye is the Jewish people. And if God allowed this to happen to the children of Israel, don't think that God won't let it happen right here in America. Because America the beautiful is America the bloody. We've killed over 60 million babies in abortion clinics. And we give them a fruit basket and a thank you and a bravery card. It's good stuff, church. And the Bible says, let's go look for them, find a good place to close. The Bible said, booming like a sea storm and thunder, tramp, tramp, tramp. That's the beating of soldiers' feet. Tramp, tramp, tramp. Riding hard on war horses. Well, Brother Joey, it's, it's 2021. We don't fight with a cavalry anymore. I would beg to differ. There's an army going to come against Israel. The Bible said in Revelation that at Megiddo, I, we stood there in 2013, Megiddo. 
the Battle of Armageddon where to be where to be fought. Those men will be on horseback. They'll be came, amen, from, from, from Palestine and other nations on horseback. And the Bible said the blood will be up to the horse's bridles. And the Bible says here, John, the revelator, he was on the island of Patmos. They tried to shut him up and couldn't. They boiled him in oil, beat him, tried to kill him, couldn't shut him up, so they put him on an island. And the Bible said with the wind in his back, Holy Ghost gave him, gave him scriptures. He began to prophesy about things he saw in these days. He said, I saw a stinging beast, a scorpion with fire coming out of his tail. That sounded like many horses running. That's a helicopter with a 50 caliber machine gun on it. He, he, he didn't know what he was describing, so he had to use what he knew. He didn't, he didn't have a militant vocabulary, amen, but he was talking about all the weapons of war that we have now. Give God praise. He said they're coming in battle formation. Jesus said a kingdom divided cannot stand. America is destined to fall because Jesus said a kingdom divided cannot stand. You got these two parties so far apart they'll never come together again. But I promise you, in this brokenness, God's going to take care of a remnant. Give God praise anyway. You won't hear this kind of preaching much. And the Bible said we've heard the news. We're as limp as a wet dish rag. We're paralyzed with fear. We've heard the news. We're as limp as a, as a wet dish rag. We're paralyzed with fear. Terror has a death grip on our throats. Well, I come by to encourage you. There is a remnant God said that will not bow their knee to bail. When Elisha got that I mentality, God, I'm the only one left. Your people has forsaken you. The altars are torn down. God said, son, I got 7,000 more just like you. There is a remnant that will not bow their knee to bail. Proverbs 28, 1, the wicked flee when no man pursues, but the righteous is as bold as a lion. The righteous is as bold as a lion. You got ministers in the last days that won't tell the truth because they are, they are afraid of attacks. You got ministers that won't tell the truth because they're afraid of being censored. I'm going to tell the truth anyway because God... And I don't care what color they are. I don't care what religion they are. I don't care how bad they are. If you will tell the truth, God will back you up. Good stuff, man. The wicked flee when nobody's coming after them, but the righteous is as bold as a lion. And the Bible said here, watch this. Don't dare go out. I'm reading word for word, church. Reading word for word. Don't, don't dare go outdoors. Don't leave the house. Death's on the prowl. Don't congregate more than 10 people. Don't, don't, don't even get together on 4th of July. Oh, this is it. Don't dare go outside. Yeah, so, so, so socially separated. And, and it's wrecked a generation. You got a generation of young people don't, don't even know how to talk. I don't know how they're going to get a wife unless they just have, have an electronic wife. It's good stuff. Don't, don't, watch this. Well, this is good. Don't leave the house. Death's on the prowl. Danger everywhere. I know it's a real thing. You understand me? It was there, but it was a planned attack. Trump said it a year and a half ago. It was a planned attack. They got, they got the virus over here, and scientists looked at it. It had a killing agent in it, put in it by a scientist. It was an attack from China, and, and now, oh, man, I don't even want to get in all. Give God praise. And here it is. Don't dare go outdoors. Don't leave the house. Death's on the proud danger everywhere. Daughter of Zion, dress in black. Black in your face with ashes. You know, daughter of Zion dressed in black. You know, at the same time, the governor of California shut the churches down. Shut, don't go to church. Don't congregate together. You can go everywhere else. You can have a riot and burn down the CVS. You can burn down grandmama's uh, grocery store, but just don't go to church. Give God praise anyway. <laughs> daughter of Zion dressed in black. Put that mask on. Let, 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 let me go ahead and get you ready for a Muslim invasion. Give God praise. Man, that's good stuff. And the Bible said the countdown has begun. Six, five, four, three, the terror is on us. This nation's under attack. It might not be with missiles, it, but it's with social media. It's with viruses that's being created and sent over here, and we're the ones to pay for it. Oh, you, 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 can't, you can't take a trip if you hadn't had your vaccine, but illegal immigrants can come through and get free Medicaid. It's lunacy. It's ignorance. No common sense at all. Somebody with some God in them needs to get back in the White House and say enough isn't. My mama's 75 years old, needs surgery. She can't get without a ton of money. When people can come through, did I read the phrase illegal? Give them a Medicaid call. 
Don't, don't, don't even test them for coronavirus, but it will oppress you for not taking it. The devil is a lie. <laughs> Daughter of Zion, dress in black. Blacken your face with ashes. Weep most bitterly. As for our only child, the countdown has begun. Six, five, four, three. The terror is on us. He, he said it again. He said, God, give me this task. Jeremiah said, God, give me this task. I'm reading word for I'm coming to a close. You can find a worship song. Just don't start it yet. I've made you the, the examiner of my people to examine and weigh their lives. They're a thick-headed, hard-nosed bunch, rotten to the core, the lot of them. The Bible talks about preachers that have to preach to stiff-necked, hard-headed people. The generation of past of preachers, amen, they're, they're not going to be effective in these last days. Now, there, there was a time for, for, for passive preachers because there was a time of peace. But we in war times now preaching to a stick neff hard-nosed, hard-headed people, and the men and women of God that, 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 that bear pulpits, and pre even you, a, as you testify and witness, amen, you're going to have to be tough enough. You're going to have to have the tenacity to keep warring and keep praying, keep believing in God even under attack. And the Bible said here, I've made you an examiner. They're thick-headed, hard-nosed. They're rotten to the core. The lot of them, refining fires are cranked up to, to, to white heat. White is the hot. I know you thought blue was, but once it gets to white, you can't see it. It's hot. But, but the ore stays a lump unchanged. It's useless to keep trying any longer. Nothing can refine evil out of them. Men will give up and call them slag. Amen. Some of them have gone too far to ever come back. And you do not want your children influenced by them. You pray for your enemies, love them. I, I, you know, I heard a minister preaching the other day about praying for your enemies. But he was preaching in a way, a, a, amen, that you should succumb to them. I'll pray for them and I'll love them and I'll pray they get their soul right, but I'm not going to succumb to their attacks. I'm, I'm, I'm not going to bow down and allow their government to rule me and tell me what I got to take. Come on, somebody, and give God some praise. Stand to your feet. In the present, prepare yourself for perilous predictions coming to fruition because we're seeing the Bible fulfilled in front of our very eyes. Every day, the, the, the enemy is advancing. Every day. But I promise you, God's in control. There's a remnant, amen, that will not bow their knee to bail. God's going to take care of us. The Bible says, amen, Jeremiah was the prophet of judgment, and he was the weeping prophet. And amen, I believe that with everything in me that we're living in the last days, there'll come a time that it's not the last days anymore, it's the last hours. And then there'll come a day, it's the last day. And church, it's fast approaching us. And the one thing you don't need to do is be lulled to sleep by some preacher that's afraid to tell you the truth. The one thing you don't need to do, you don't need to allow your conscience to be seared with a hot iron where you can do wrong and not feel bad about it. If you're doing wrong and feel guilty, you ought to raise your hand and say, God, I thank you. The Bible said in the last days they won't no longer endure sound doctrine. I, I, I read straight out of the Bible, then I explain it. I don't give you filler. I don't give you Joy's commentary of it. I got no commentary. This is the word of God. It's true. And the Bible said they'll no longer endure sound doctrine, but they'll heap up teachers to tickle their ears, give me my little feel good, give me my little goose bump, where I can go home and live how I want to. We put Band-Aids on. Don't Band-Aid me. When I, when I need help, take me to somebody can help. Don't band-aid me. I, I, I don't want all them people that wake up in hell, amen, that wasn't told. So I'm going to tell you the best I can. Give God some praise this morning. <laughs> Father, you can start the worship song. Father, we love you. We praise you. We appreciate you, God. Thank you for the power of your word. God, I thank you for types and shadows and symbolisms and comparisons, God. I thank you that Jeremiah, God, thousands of years ago could preach to us this morning, the weeping prophet that was crying out for the people, God. God, we're seeing it in, 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 in media. We're seeing it on our news outlets, Lord. This country is being invaded. This country, God, is under attack. You said, John 10, 10, the thief, the devil, amen, that age-old serpent has come to steal, kill, and destroy. And God, we're seeing it come to fruition, and we're seeing it come alive in our life. But God, we plead your blood. God, we cry out to heaven to give us some power. God, give us some help, strength in us, oh, Lord. God, don't let our children be taught. You said the teaching, God, you said the teaching was in error. God, don't let our children be taught things at school that undermine the family, the structure of a family. God, I thank you for hard words, Lord. God, don't, don't let God, God, I pray you don't ever let me put a band-aid on somebody's brokenness. 
God, don't let us try to band-aid somebody's brokenness. You are a healer. You're Jehovah Rapha. God, you didn't come to put a band-aid on it. You come to heal it, God. These altars are open, amen. You may have a band-aid on a broken heart this morning, but God said where a broken heart and a contrite spirit is, there he is. Raise your hands to heaven and tell God you love him. Thank you, God. Amen. We're out of time, but I pray that you're excited about the Word of God as we are. What an awesome Word. I pray that that Word give you the spiritual nourishment to take you through life's trials. I pray that that Word will feed you throughout this week and God will continue to give you strength, peace, safety, and protection. Amen. If this ministry feeds you, feed it. So into what God's doing here that God can continue to further the kingdom. And so we preach the gospel of Jesus Christ to the four corners of this earth. We're so thankful and appreciative that you tune in and watch us. Continue to pray for us. If you're in the area, come have church with us. Amen. We'll be looking for you. Pastor Joy Castleberry, Lifeline Ministries. Have a good day.